Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about Carl Froch versus George Groves for the title at 168 pounds. Now first, let me just say, understand that my site is gamblersadvisory.com. No matter how confident I sound in videos, understand that we're here taking risks. I'm trying to beat the casino. I'm trying to beat public opinion. At times, that means I'm going to swim up stream right let's talk about this fight just keep in mind that what I'm about to say is highly risky you need to be aware of the risk you could lose it all now to me obviously there's no question here that Carl Froch has fought the stronger competition than George Groves in general. No question at all, right? Carl Froch has been in the game a long time. He's fought uh, Jean Pascal, uh, Mikael Kessler, uh, Lucien Boutte, Andre Ward, Arthur Abraham. He's fought really a who's who of people around his weight class. And he's won some very dramatic victories. Right? He stopped Jermaine Taylor. He stopped Lucien Boutte. We're talking about knockouts. Right? Carl Froch has held his own in big fights. His fight against Arthur Abraham may have been a shutout. He was so dominant on the scorecards. I understand that the narrative on this fight is going to be a question of whether George Groves is ready to step up in class to go against the champ at 168 pounds. But as I see it, this fight is a fight between skill, right? The savviness in the ring and the techniques used by Carl Froch to win fights versus talent. I believe there's a talent gap in this fight. I believe the more talented fighter, whatever the ages of the fighters, is George Groves. Right? Let's talk about the difference between skill and talent. Right? Skill is really understanding the game you're in. I like to use a baseball analogy. Right? It's the pitcher who can outthink the batter and knows exactly how to throw off speed pitches at the appropriate time, has a knowledge base to figure out exactly how to get the batter out right doesn't need to have his best stuff because he knows at this let's say ball and strike count I can throw a backdoor slider for a strike and this hitter has been set up to not expect that pitch in that location at that time right to me the skill guys are the guys who age the best in boxing. Think Bernard Hopkins. He doesn't punch that hard, right? He doesn't have the fastest foot speed you've ever seen. His hand speed isn't dazzling. You don't look at Bernard Hopkins and immediately think of Sugar Ray Leonard. But yet Bernard Hopkins can take on much younger men, men with titles, and can literally make that guy have an off night, right? He can take on a guy like Kelly Pavlik, much bigger puncher than him, a guy with an excellent jab, a guy who was unbeaten at the time, and win the fight by several rounds because he has a knowledge base that allows him to know that Kelly Pavlik, when he's turning, can't throw punches, right? That Kelly Pavlik falls for feints and that Kelly Pavlik wasn't slick. Right, so he could overcome Pavlik's talent advantage. 
Now, talent's a different thing entirely. You don't have to know what the hitter is thinking. If you have that fastball that you can throw at 100 miles an hour for strikes, right? If you have that skill set that very few have, you can just go out and do it, right? The hitter can know what's coming. The hitter can't do anything about it, right? Now, George Groves, as I see it, and I understand in the press he's a big underdog, fair enough. But George Groves, to me, moves better than Carl Frotch. George Groves has the hand speed advantage on Carl Frotch. George Groves, controversial statement, hits as hard as Carl Frotch. If I were to sum up this fight the way I see it, it would be with the phrase, jump ball, right? Let me go further. In my opinion, if George Groves fights the fight that he fought against James DeGale, I believe George Groves has a chance to win this fight. To pull the upset. The way I'm going to bet the fight, what I'm going to try to do, is to play in the world of prop betting. Right? My big concern on this fight is the fact that in the later rounds, where George Groves has very little experience, because keep in mind, George Groves is a heavy handed knockout puncher. Most of Groves' victims hit the canvas in the first half of a fight. My concern, why I'm not just saying I believe Groves wins the fight outright, deals with the later rounds, rounds 9, 10, 11, and 12. I know Carl Frotch has been in wars. Think both Kessler fights. Think of his comeback against Andre Ward in the later rounds where he has had to produce in those later rounds, the Jermaine Taylor late knockout, and Carl Frotch has answered the bell, right? George Groves might be able to. That James DeGale fight was a 12-round fight. It's just that I haven't seen enough of Groves in that situation to have a firm conviction on that. So the way I'm going to try to play this fight is I believe... Carl Frotch, who in my opinion, has a problem with an opponent's movement, won't be able to come close to dealing with George Groves for the first six rounds of this fight. In other words, I believe the only guy who has a chance at a knockout in the first six rounds of this fight is the underdog, George Groves. Right, so what I'm going to try to do is to bet everything else. I'm going to try to carve out the first six rounds. So the bet I'm recommending, and this is really for experienced prop bettors only, is George Groves to win the fight, hedged with Carl Frotch from round seven to the end of the fight. Okay, in other words, you want Carl Frotch on a prop bet for the second half of this fight and Carl Frotch to win, hedged with George Groves, the underdog, to win the fight. In other words, understand the risk. If Carl Frotch comes out like he did against Lucien Butte and is able to end this fight early, like he did against Yusef Mack, and is able to end this fight within the first six rounds, you lose it all. Let me just say this, okay, Carl Frotch, think about him, I believe the blueprint on how to beat Carl Frotch is laid out in his fight against Andre Durrell, but understand Carl Frotch had two other problematical fights against guys who move. Jermaine Taylor moved, Carl Frotch was lost the first two-thirds of that fight. Let me just tell you, too, the movement caused Frotch so much trouble 
that Frotch at one point gets dropped to the canvas in the fight. Now, as I like to say, knockouts cause amnesia, right? All we remember is Carl Frotch delivering with the KO in the last round. My advice to you is to look at the first eight rounds of that fight against Jermaine Taylor. Taylor fought long, right? He's sticking a jab in your face like a metronome, right? He's walking around the ring, right? He's not completely stationary against Carl Frotch. Understand that George Groves, when he moves, moves better than Jermaine Taylor, right? Carl Frotch was lost early in that fight. In fact, Carl Frotch back then used to pace himself where he would deliberately give away the early rounds, ironically, just like Bernard Hopkins does, right? Carl Frotch understands that physically he doesn't have the hand speed of others. He doesn't have the foot speed of others. So Carl Frotch paces himself and gives away early rounds, right? So Carl Frotch gave away the early rounds against Jermaine Taylor, but was able to catch him late. Well, against Andre Durrell, Carl Frotch had problems. Now understand, Andre Durrell can't fight inside, but neither could Carl Frotch at that time. And I'll just say that Andre Durrell was just quicker than Carl Frotch, completely frustrated Carl Frotch. The fight was in Carl Frotch's backyard, in my opinion, Carl Frotch lost that fight. Now, I know officially Carl Frotch won the fight by decision, but my point is simply that Andre Durrell, who does not punch as hard as George Groves, right? Andre Durrell gave Carl Frotch all he could handle. Frotch had a problem with Durrell's movement. The Andre Ward fight. Andre Ward was able to time Carl Frotch early in that fight. Then he was able to come in with these leaping left hands and the left hand was landing. One of the secrets to George Groves is that George Groves is that rear puncher who punches hard with both hands. Right, George Groves, in my opinion, is ambidextrous. He can knock you out left or right. Right, he throws very heavy punches. Right, my point is simply, as you look at Andre Ward repeatedly land that left early on and also tie up Carl Frotch, just understand that George Groves can land heavy lefts. Right, so in my opinion, as I said before, if George Groves fights the fight that he did against James DeGale, I believe he wins this fight, right? But he has to be ready to do this for 12 rounds, right? At a minimum, I'm expecting George Groves to make it to the seventh round. I don't think Carl Frotch will be able to come close to catching him early in the fight. Carl is cagey. But George Groves just has too much, moves too well. If he's on his game, he should be able to keep Carl Frotch at the end of a jab. Understand, both fighters are going to have to be tentative coming inside because both guys hit hard. Now let's talk about the problems with the fight. The biggest problem with the fight is George Groves himself. I've watched George Groves fights where for some reason Groves, who knows he's a puncher, gets lured into shootouts. That Sierra fight could have gone either way. It's shocking that George Groves with his legs, right, his ability to move, sometimes gives away that movement and actually starts to trade with an opponent. If there's one way to get knocked out by Carl Frotch early, it's by trying to stand there and trade with them. George Groves needs to be on his game, right? He needs to come in and he needs to understand 
that he has to use all of his talents. He's at his best when he marries the punching power to the foot speed, right? I looked at his last fight against Noe Gonzalez. Look at the last round of that fight. Groves gets the knockout. But of course, Groves is standing around really doing a Floyd Mayweather impression when Mayweather knows that he is the better chess player than an opponent and just stands there and trades, right? This is the Mayweather who sometimes allows himself to get caught up on the ropes because he feels the other guy can't do anything. I don't want Groves to use that strategy against Carl Froch. I want Groves to move like he did against James DeGale. Right? Understand. Let's be clear about this. I believe George Groves has already fought someone better than Carl Froch, and that was James DeGale. And I thought Groves had it right there. While I personally believe DeGale won that fight, I believe Groves' strategy was spot on. Right? Hit and move. Hit and move. After a while, DeGale figured out that he shouldn't be on his front foot. He should be on his back foot. That's when the fight got a little bit more interesting because he sucked Groves in, and Groves is still a young guy who doesn't quite know what to do when the opponent gets on his back foot. My advice to Groves is you have the hand speed advantage here. Quite frankly, you're the flashier fighter. You're the fighter with the heavier upside, right? Right? If Carl Frotch tries to bait you in, don't do what Lucien Butte did. Come in with your hands low, expecting your upper body movement to allow you to slip punches. What you need to do is to double, triple the jab. Throw combinations. You need to be Sugar Ray Leonard, right? Because, quite frankly, George Groves has the combination punching ability. And, quite frankly... Carl Frotch needs you to fight his fight in order to beat you. So if Carl Frotch, after figuring out that he can't catch you on his front foot, decides to go on his back foot, you need to just shoot the jab, double, triple it, continue to move around him and let him know, Carl, you're behind in the fight. You need to come to me. You need to play my game in order to have a chance. So the bet I'm recommending here, it's a prop bet. I like Groves to win the fight. I like Carl Frotch after the seventh round, right? In other words, I like the leverage I'm getting with the underdog. I don't believe the favorite fighter is going to be able to come out and is going to be able to touch George Groves in a meaningful way in the first six rounds of this one. Now, let me address something. I know Carl Frotch came out and looked great the first three rounds against Mikael Kessler. You need to understand that George Groves is not Mikael Kessler. Whatever the reputations of the fighters, whatever their experience level, just understand that George Groves moves a lot better than Mikael Kessler. Right? George Groves can literally fight an Andre Durrell style. And I'm talking about prime Andre Durrell. So you're kidding yourself if you think Carl Frotch is going to be able to come out in those first three rounds and land a jab like he did against Mikkel Kessler. Put another way for the boxing historians. You know, one of the best jabs in heavyweight history was Sonny Liston's jab. Understand it's Sonny Liston who taught George Foreman how to throw a jab. Sonny Liston battered guys with that jab. If you couldn't handle Sonny Liston's jab, the fight was over. But if you look at the early rounds of his first fight against Cassius Clay, you're going to see that Sonny Liston couldn't land that jab. Cassius Clay just moved around the ring too well. Clay didn't even have to do much in the first round of their first fight. I'm not even sure if Cassius Clay landed a punch in that first round. But yet he dominated the round. Ring generalship. Sonny Liston couldn't land his jab. Sonny Liston was a puppy following a guy who was leading him all around the ring without allowing him to land punches. George Groves can do that. 
but he has to come in with the mindset of fighting an Andre Durrell fight, even though he knows that he punches at least as hard as Carl Frotch. He has to come in and use his legs. Groves' legs, in my opinion, are the key to this fight. I like Groves to win the fight. I like Carl Frotch in the second half of the fight. That's the hedge that I'm going to try to pull off. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And I'll just say this. Experience is great and it does matter. But understand more than anything else, including experience, styles make fights. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.